Most games with physics only use rigid bodies, meaning every object is solid and cannot deform or change shape. But if we want to simulate something like a car being destroyed or cloth, then we'll need to use soft bodies. These soft body Tetris videos caught my attention, and I thought it would be a cool challenge to try to replicate them in Unity. However, Unity only supports rigid bodies, so I'll have to find a way to work around that. Originally, I was planning on adding bones to all the Tetris pieces and then putting a rigid body and a spring joint on all the bones, like in this video, but I decided that wasn't good enough, so I'm going to need to build my own physics engine which supports soft bodies. I started by making these points which contain a mass, position, and velocity. Every frame I add forces like gravity to the point's velocity, and then I add the velocity to its position. These points will make up everything in my engine. I can connect points together using springs to make larger objects, and when I connect them in the shape of a rope, you can already see more complex behaviors emerging. Springs try to maintain their length by pushing points apart if they're too close and pulling them together if they're too far using a formula called Hooke's Law to estimate how much force should be applied. Handling collisions should be a lot easier than in normal rigid body simulations because everything is made of points, so the process to detect collisions between a soft body and other objects in the world is first it loops through every point in the soft body and then it checks if each point in the soft body is inside another object's bounding box. If it is, we continue and we make a ray cast from the point to any point outside of the object, and then we check each line to see if it intersects with this ray. And then if there's an odd amount of intersections, that means that the point is inside. If there's an even, then it's outside. And this works with any shape. And then to resolve the collision, I can just find the closest point on the line and then push it out and update the velocity. So with this system, only triangles were able to maintain their shape. Every other shape just collapses immediately. So this means that any soft body we make needs to be built of triangles. I wrote a script to generate points in a grid and then add springs between all of them in this pattern. This is called the spring mass model. By giving it an internal structure like this, it can accurately simulate elastic objects. It has a big problem though, whenever it hits something a little too hard, the springs bend backwards, making the object collapse into itself. This happens because the springs are only trying to keep their two points a certain distance apart, but they don't care about the original shape of the object. This video, the solution that they give is to add self-collision between all the points so that they can't come too close to each other. But I couldn't get this to work for me, and I don't know why. If any of you know a better solution, then feel free to tell me in the comments. I wanted to try another approach called shape matching to see if it would be any better. I first came across this method in this video about the physics of jelly car. The idea of shape matching is to set aside a copy of the original shape and then every frame you put that copy on top of the deformed shape and then try to match up all the points with the positions where they should be in and then add a spring like force so that it can maintain its shape. I struggled for a while to get the springs to behave how I wanted them to, but um, eventually I realized that without any connections between the actual points, it would always look a little bit weird, especially if you have too many points. So this is as far as I got with shape matching. At this point, I decided to try a different velocity integration method. I've been using the Euler integration, which is what I described at the beginning, but I want to try the Verlet integration. They are very similar, except in Verlet, you don't keep track of velocity. Instead, you store each point's previous position. Every frame, you add the difference between this frame's position and the last frame's position to the position. Now, this method is supposed to be a little bit more stable than the Euler method, so that's good. And also, we can now connect points using something called sticks. 
like springs, sticks just try to keep two points a certain distance apart. But instead of using forces to do it, they just put each point where it needs to be exactly every frame. If we connect four points together and put one stick in the middle, then we can simulate nearly rigid objects. And to make soft bodies, I can just alter these sticks a little bit to make them a little bit weaker. And this is what that looks like now. This isn't perfect, it still goes inside out sometimes, but I think it's good enough to start making my soft body Tetris. I made all the Tetris pieces. The yellow one is a little bit broken, but I'll fix it later. As you can see, they don't collide with each other yet because it's a little bit more complicated to resolve collisions between soft bodies. But I got it working pretty well, and now my soft body Tetris is finally done. It might not look as good as the other ones, but this one runs in real time, and the other ones probably take a few hours to render. It's also not the most stable simulation because when there's a lot of objects stacked on top of each other, the soft bodies at the bottom can get crushed into themselves and then the collision detection kind of breaks, making it suck in nearby soft bodies like a black hole. This isn't actually bad though because I can just call this my line clearing feature. If for some reason you want to play this yourself, you can download it on itch.io, the link's in the description. Anyways, the last feature I wanted to add in this video was plasticity. Right now, my springs try to maintain the original shape of the object, but what if you want an object that can get permanently damaged, like a car after a crash? Doing this is pretty simple, I just adapt the spring's rest length based on the forces on it. And as you can see here, after I squish it a little bit, it's still kind of bent. If you thought this video was cool or interesting, leave a like so that more people can see it and, may and maybe subscribe so that you can see more of my videos. But anyways, thanks for watching.